Good afternoon. My name is Kayla Collins and I am a fifth grade teacher. And if you're following me on Instagram, I had posted a little bit ago that I was going to be doing a Facebook Live here at four o'clock. It is actually not four o'clock Pacific time. I'm running a little bit late. We have parent teacher conferences today, so I'm sorry if you were waiting for it. Um, I just I've had a um, quite a few people recently asking me the details of how I put the classroom together. I have a cafe style flexible seating classroom that I'll flip the camera around and show you and I'm getting so many questions and it's just a lot easier for me to come on here and just say the answer to the questions instead of writing out responses to everybody. So if you have any questions along the way, go ahead and ask or even if you're watching the replay later and you have a question, you can leave it in the comments on here and I will answer it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip around the camera and just show you my classroom and as I'm going along, I'm going to talk about um, where I got all the stuff that's in a classroom. Because one of the questions is, did you furnish this yourself? Did you pay for this? How did you set this up? How did, were you able to do this? And I will say that um, everything except for the smart board that's in here came from me flipping it around. So everything came from scratch pretty much. Nothing that was, that's in here was already in the classroom besides the smart board and the whiteboard. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this around. All right. So let's see, we can start in this corner, I guess. So in this corner, um, this is where we do one of our centers during math time. This is kind of like our spiral math center. So you're gonna see all kinds of calendar math and stuff. And so I got all these frames that are up here on the board for really cheap at a sale at uh, Michael's. So they were only like a dollar each. And I actually have the kids calendar math, spiral math pieces up in the frame so that we can use a whiteboard and, and answer it all together with calendar math. We have a little clipboard hanging thing. So on this wall, um, all these frames were super cheap. They all came from a big sale, like I said. The chairs are just chairs from Walmart. They're a little fold-up pop-out, um, pop us on chairs, I guess you want to call them, that were like $15, and I bought them a few years ago. And then this lamp actually matches with um, two other small lamps that are in the classroom. I got them at a secondhand store. They were brand new in the box, but they were like $10 for the whole set. And then on this wall is where we keep track of all our um, our learning pods or our centers, who's at what center and what their jobs are. All those little chalkboards, once again, at Michael, they were less than a dollar each one. And then as I'm going along, oh, I guess I should do the furniture down here. So we have this ottoman I found at a yard sale. Um, so everything's used in here, you'll notice. This is not brand new furniture. In pictures, it looks pretty fancy, but as I'm going through, you're going to see that it's not perfect. It's all used. What I love about this ottoman is that you open it up and there's all this storage. So when people are asking, where are all your books? Where's your stuff? You're going to see a lot of hidden little places that everything is kept. But because we go through all the procedures of class job and who goes to get what and where it is, all those first few weeks of school, the kids Kids know right where everything is so nothing's hidden from them they all know it's just to the outside eye it looked very uh, simple in here and not very cluttered the couch was for free if you look on Craigslist and look online people are giving away things all the time if you're willing to just come grab it from them so I got this couch for free it's a very nice couch uh, this coffee table was at Goodwill secondhand store for $20 it looked a lot different it had all these extra little like accessory pieces and it was this dark wood my husband sanded it down to make it look like um, this pure light color wood and also we got these wheels for a dollar and he put them on for me so now this coffee table can be moved anywhere even though it's a heavy wood coffee table and it has all these little pillows underneath and the kids like to sit at the table a lot they sit on pillows kneeling on it or they might sit on the couch and, or in between the couch and the table and they just sit around the table to work so this is one of the workspaces when we're doing our learning um, learning centers in the morning and with our integrated language arts and uh, science they often this is what this is called the lounge center and there are three kids on the couch and then two those two chairs come over kids sit on the pillows and i have two other chairs that i'll show you so this corner uh, is my workspace that I use mostly after school and it's getting kind of cluttered because we're in parent teacher conferences right now so I got a lot going on. Um, those are the other two little matching lamps that were with that big one for $10 at a secondhand store. Um, that mirror which is free because it's actually pretty run down. I made the little um, picture board I guess you want to call. So everything, all this kind of stuff, this is actually the You Are So Loved. Another teacher that I met through social media made that for us and mailed it to us, Amy. And then this desk and that cool old leather um, um, office chair somebody was just giving away for free they were just done with it because it's old so I grabbed those up same thing with the bookshelf another teacher just getting rid of them so I snatched those up uh, this little antique um, deck is what I actually use to put my dot cam on for the smart board and my whiteboard markers my husband's aunt had this and she gave it to me for the classroom and then the carpet was on clearance at Amazon it was actually more expensive one of the more expensive things because it was like $90 and here's all the kids' robots, 
They made those robots from scratch and they work and are solving a problem for Benjamin Franklin. We're pretending to take them back in time. All right, uh, another $5 secondhand deal, but this is what I really love. These chairs are the ones that I was talking about that we take over to do that math center, or that um, integrated science and language arts center. And they're on wheels and they're like these little leather, like fancy chairs, but they're, um, they look pretty little, but it's actually comfortable. Even I can sit in them and they're really comfortable. They're actually not just little kid chairs and they were at Goodwill for $30. It's my favorite thing I have found. Um, to get these two chairs for $30 and the kids love them and then they can just roll them right over the carpet over to the lounge area work and then roll them right back or if kids want to kind of work more independently when it's an independent time they don't want to be right next to somebody they can just move this wherever in the room that they want to be uh, that chest is another hidden place with my teacher books in it and it was given to me by my mother-in-law this map is from World Market and my students last year gave me a gift card as a going away present to buy something and I decided to buy this map from World Market for the classroom. So it was pretty expensive. I don't remember how much now, I think like $50, but it was a gift through gift card. And then all this furniture right here, um, all this storage, the bookshelves and everything like right here, um, actually aren't used, they're from Walmart, but they're pretty cheap and they look pretty good quality and they're heavy duty from Walmart and I got all these little I don't know, the fabric boxes, I guess, that you can keep in them. And everything's labeled, so the kids know right what's in everything. I also love baskets, and uh, Fred Meyers was having a sale where their baskets were like 90% off, so I grabbed a bunch. So I just pull these baskets, like you'll see they say centers or book club and stuff. For our different centers, I can just grab the whole basket and go right to the center. And then we have our puppets, because we use puppets all the time. So we have our puppets up there, even in fifth grade. More storage where we keep all kinds of supplies in here. These chalkboards are made. I made them with chalk paint. And then my husband and I took, um, we went to Home Depot and they're like leftover kind of scratch wood that was like 80 cents for eight feet um, we got. And then we just dressed it and painted it and made these frames around it. And then you'll see that the frame for that whiteboard over there is actually the same. So the whiteboard was already there, but I put a frame around it uh, to make it look, uh, to match all the chalkboards that are in my room. I use a lot of chalkboards, so anywhere I see them on sale, I grab them real fast. So those are our different centers and the ways we rotate through. Everything has a lot of procedures and very organized, so that's why the kids know right where to go all the time. And we use clipboards a ton because we are flexible seating. The kids aren't always sitting at a desk. They like to sit on the floor. They like to sit in their leather chairs. They like to sit at the tall chairs against the wall. Um, so they can take a clipboard and go sit wherever they'd like. And then we have extra paper in there. Lots of supplies are in here as well. Uh, this is my least favorite part of the classroom just because it's not pretty like the rest. But this is just our uh, our sink and our microwave. The kids keep their water bottles all on top of there. Their water bottles have their name. They keep it on top of the microwave and they can come grab their water whenever they want and put it back. They can keep it at their workspace if they want. And then this is how we keep track of all our class jobs. We have a lot of different class jobs. And um, the kids got to take a silly or serious picture on the first day of school. And then I just rotate through every week. I move their pictures over so they know which one is their job. And this is the one like area inside the classroom that is actually their personal space inside the classroom. And that's because they each have their own shelf that's labeled with their name and that's where they keep their Chromebook. They have a little green folder that they keep all their notes from home or things to take home in that green folder that they take home every day. And any books they have that they want to read while they're here at school and that kind of stuff they can keep on this shelf. Otherwise, everything that's personally theirs, like their lunch or their coat or whatever else, um, outside the classroom we have um, lockers and they keep all their stuff in their lockers. This table right here is one of our favorite tables and this is the one thing that was not cheap. <laughs> everything else in the classroom, I pride myself because I had pretty much flipped this whole classroom for under um, $400. It was like $350 until I saw this table and I had my husband had been wanting this table for years and years. It's an $800 table from World Market and we found somebody online three hours away that was selling it for $400, so for half the price. So we got in the Jeep, we drove all the way there and went and bought it just so we could have this table because it has these attached stools. Um, that move in and out, I'm kind of squeaky right now, but the kid can be twisting side to side. And then we at Ikea, they had these stools for like 20 or $30. They used to be all black and my husband sand, sanded them down to try to make them match a little bit better with the table. But this is definitely one of the more popular places to sit. And since we're in centers pretty much all day, um, my center always meets at this table. So when we're doing guided reading integrated in with social studies and science, or when we're doing our math center, um, I usually sit on one end on one of these stools with an easel whiteboard and the kids sit around um, on the different stools. And then this table, 
was online for super cheap with um, all the with. Uh, I think it came with eight chairs originally, but some of the chairs have kind of fallen apart. But uh, it's a standing table. It's one of the cafe, I'll back up so you can kind of see. It's actually really tall, and I originally only put like four of the chairs on there, and then I wanted the kid to have the option to stand there if they wanted as well. But this year, for whatever reason, the kid really did not want to stand at that table ever. They wanted the, the chairs, they wanted the stool, and that's, that's the whole point of flexible seating is for them to have choice. And if that's not the choice that they want, they don't want to stand, then I went in and got some more chairs so that they could sit at it since that was the thing that they found more comfortable with that they wanted to sit and the person kind of threw in when I got the chairs secondhand they also had this bench that went with it and that is like new within the last month and the kids love that bench they always want to sit there two or three of them so we really had to work on making good choices for our learning as well as just what we want so there are certain times when it is appropriate to sit two or three on that bench for our learning like when we're doing cahoots and stuff but other times when we need our space when we're writing and working so this table comfortably hold eight if I took out the chairs they could stand it could be more but it's really ideal for eight kids to be around the standing table all right so I guess I'll flip it back to this side um, this kind of just shows a lot more storage I have extra chairs from that table that I just set against the wall and it's kind of a more popular spot right now to be sitting at this tall um, chair with our clipboard right here and just working or pulling the chair around and using this as a desk as well so a lot of kids have been pulling it around and sitting there and this is where we keep a lot more storage we're not really a textbook school we're very stem based and we're, we're always working on projects and integrating in subject but we do have different journals that we keep in these different boxes like one of them is just all our whiteboards and our erasers and markers so the kids know when we pull this out for math and different things so everything has a place we even have a box for headphones. Everything has a place and a purpose, and the kids know right where it goes. And here's three more of those boards that I made a couple summers ago. This middle one, I just put burlap on it to kind of make a bulletin board, and then we just hang our above and beyond work. And some different kind of like anchor charts. Except I really like printing things and making things more, so a lot of our anchor chart style things I've just printed after we've learned about it and put up. And I can tell I need to switch out some of these uh, string lights. <laughs> Our light bulbs are finally dying, so a lot of them are. I have the overhead lights on right now, but they are never really actually on, and there's plenty of light without them because we have, sorry to be moving so much, but we have all these lamps, we have this big window, it brings in a lot of natural light. So I almost never turn on the big overhead fluorescent lights. I did for the purpose of the video right now, except when we might need it for an art project or something, or if it's a dark, kind of gloomy day, we might turn it on. But the kids have really grown to love not having the fluorescent lights. They always want me to hang the string light. So I hope, oh, and then here's the supplies. This is another question I get a lot of time. It's just classroom supplies. So we do have shared supplies. We have all kinds of little baskets and jars in there. Somebody has the job to be in charge of supplies. So if it is an independent work time and everybody's working all over the place, wherever they want, the person who had the job with the supplies would walk around and just make sure every area has the supplies that they need or that every kid has a pencil or whatever it is that they need. Then there's people whose job is to get the journals out of here or the books and pass them out. So there's always there's always somebody who's in charge. So it's never all the kids just rushing to go get supplies and running to go wherever they want to go. And even though we are fifth grade, we do have a carpet, and we do do all our whole group at this carpet, but there is very minimal whole group time. I mean, they maybe sit at this carpet for 20 minutes total of the day, and the rest of the day is in small centers or independently working. I don't really like to make them sit and listen to me talk very long, so, so they're there. But, yeah, so this is, I'm trying to think what other kind of questions there were. A big question was just about price. So it's just trying to give you kind of some estimates about how much I really spent on this room. Like I said before, until I had bought that big stool table, I had only spent um, like $350 total in this whole room of transform. Like nothing was here except for the smart board and the sink. But then I bought this table and it was another 400 So now I, I do think it's pretty great that it's still under $1,000. And I did spend most of my own money. Um, the school helped out a little bit and gave me some funds for it. Oh yeah, that's a good question and I get that question a lot. Our school caps off at 20 So currently this year I actually only have 15 Next year I'll go back up to 20 and so um, the question that I get with that is because people it doesn't look like enough space for all the kids to work and there's not enough table space but like I said before with 15 I have I have eight kids that can fit here and then I have um, you know six that can fit at the stool table 
oh awesome yay robotics <laughs> and then and then the kids love to sit around this table and all the different chairs so really there's plenty of space even if I did have 20 kids but next year I have this other table that is a kind of like this espresso style one I have another one that I'm going to be putting over here um, next year just to make sure that there's even more table space I'm so excited to hear that somebody else is teaching robotics yeah we use VEX and I I am so proud of the yeah, I taught in public with 30 kids, and this is the way to do it. I know we don't really have control over it, but I'm so happy to be in a school where we have smaller cap size for classrooms. So yeah, I was never trained in robotics or computer programming, and so I'm really, really proud that, that the kids have gotten this far and that we're doing awesome with their, and I, I, I'll just, our driving question that we had before is the kids had to design and make a prototype of a robot that actually functions, that solves a problem that to give to Benjamin Franklin in the 1700s. We have all kinds of cool ideas over here. We have one of them that has a sensor that's like, uh, let's see, I think it fell apart now, <laughs> this one, but we're done. But it had this whole sensor that came like all the way out, and then it can sense heat, which is really sensing the color red, but it's a prototype. And it, and it senses heat, so that way in the 1700s, somebody could have that around their house and be driving it around at night just so that they could sense if there were any wild animals about to come in to their, um, and hurt their cattle or if there was predators. So this is all coming straight from the kids. They came up with problems to solve, and, and they came up with a prototype of a robot and then presented on it. And then now our driving question, our next big project we're doing is how can you use computer programming to modify your robot and then how would the change affect the culture of Boston in the 1700s so now they're learning computer programming and they're actually programming their robots so they're not remote control and then they're writing and presenting a big uh, answering that big question of technolo technological no no I can't say technological change sorry I don't know why I can't say that word but anyways about um how the change affects our affects culture. So they wrote yesterday a big essay on like um, how the internet and cell phones have changed our culture, and it was really interesting to hear because this is a generation that really has grown up with the internet and cell phones and tablets their whole life. And I'm not even that old, but I feel like I was kind of one of the that shift of that generation where I didn't have the internet, I didn't have cell phones until I was in college, and so I can really see the change that that has had on our culture and the effect. So it was neat to hear the kids' opinion and hear have them critically think about what how different life would be if they didn't have those things so we're really focusing on technology and the way it changes all right so are there any other questions oh let's see yes Okay, yes, those are both really good questions. Yes, I am a project lead the way school to answer that. So, yes. Um, so, and then I, and then the other question was, te yes, we are project based too. So to answer both the questions, we are STEM, we are project based, and we are project lead the way. So that's why I have like the driving question that's up here is because we're project based, and that's why I keep saying that like um, science integrated with language arts at this center over here, and that with me I have like guided reading um, being integrated in with social studies at this center. They're doing their writing, integrating everything with the. Um, driving question. So yes, we're completely integrated. We're project-based, so we're also standard-based. So we our focus is completely on reaching all the common core and next generation standard, but how we do that looks very different since we are um, STEM and project-based. And then, um, oh, item from TPT and math. Yes, I'm glad you asked because my passion is math, and I, we do crazy things every um, every Monday for Mad Math Monday. All kinds of crazy fun things. So if you're following me on Instagram, you've probably seen. But I have detective math in my TPT store. I have camping math. I have candy math. I have all kinds of fun like classroom tran um, transformation math that we do because math is is honestly my passion. I love teaching all subjects, but math is a lot, a lot of fun. So you should check it out. And if for I have things for grade kindergarten through six. So even if you're not a fifth grade teacher, there's all kinds of things. Um, so we do have few textbooks, but we don't get them out very often because we are project-based. So we do, we have all kinds of books. And that's the other question I get is, it doesn't look like we have any books anywhere, which seems a little alarming, but I promise you we do. We have books all over the place. And all of that, the cabinet down there and in all of those boxes are a ton of our books and all of these um, cubbies. We have all our books and in this ottoman. So they're kind of put away and then we bring them out. We work in our centers, we put them away, move on to the next thing. So we keep everything really clean just because I like it to be simple. I don't want it to be cluttered. I don't want it to be overwhelming. So that's why things are kind of put away, but it, there's a lot of learning happening here. And I mean, we are a reading and writing classroom where all day is reading and writing. It doesn't matter if you're in science or in math or in language art, whatever it is, you are reading and writing. That's how we integrate in all those subjects. So every morning, for example, they've been having a robotics math story problem written on the board that they come in and they get to answer the story problem using the math concept that we're learning, but it has to do with robotics in Boston. So that way it's integrating in all those subjects. 
Um, fifth grade math, I want to do pro Yeah, yeah, it's so much fun. I Go check it out. I'm so excited to hear that because I love making math fun. It's like the highlight of <laughs> doing it is flip. And to me, I always loved math when I was a kid because I always thought of it like being a detective. And I loved thinking that I was a detective and solving things. So now I've created a gazillion like detective math thing just that have the kids, they have three centers each and they get to rotate through and solve all these cases and use their imaginations and you can make the whole room. Like we listen to spy music and they have detective badges that come with the sets, all kinds of stuff to go with it. All right, I think I, maybe I answered everything. Oh, doing it with 20 plus students. Oh yeah, the flexible seating. I will say, um, if you're not following already, you should go follow Top Dog Teach Teaching, Top Dog Teaching. Her name is Kayla as well. And um, she had done flexible seating in public school with a variety number of students. I, and also, I'm trying to think of some other names. I don't know, I'm drawing a blank here. But there are a lot of other teachers, I will say, that are in public school who have done flexible seating and it really does work. And you can do it with 20 plus kids. Obviously, next year when I have um, more kids in here, it, I'm gonna, like I said, have another table, but it's really all about how you set it up. It gotta be extremely structured. So you, like, even though this looks exciting and fun, it's a cafe and it's very relaxed, it's also extremely structured. So like I said, to give you an example, we um, start our day at the carpet, but then when it's time to do um, our, to go into the subjects and start working, I have one group here that's working with me, I have a group here that's working independently, another group that's working over here, and they stay in their centers and their areas, and we pull over chairs and pillows and whatever we need. And there you go, there's somebody right there who had more more kids with flexible seating. And then we rotate through centers all day. And there's very few times that they are actually working independently, but even when they are, um, there's the kids get to sit all over the place. And even on the carpet with their clipboard, there's plenty of spaces to be sitting. It actually gave me a ton more space taking out desks. So even with more kids, there would be lots of space to do it. It just means that everything has to be structured with a lot of procedures to make sure that it runs smoothly and it's not chaotic. All right. Any other questions? And I guess I'd go. So once again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's late to start this video. Um, we're, I have parent-teacher conferences all tonight and then all tomorrow, which is an exciting time because I love to show the parents all the things that the kids are learning and growing in. And like I said before, if you do come up with another question, even if it's not about flexible seating or if it is or if it's about project-based or any of that kind of stuff, um, you can just leave a comment on here if you're watching the replay and you have a question or you can send me a message through Facebook or on Instagram. And if you haven't already, you can check out my TPT store. The link is on my Facebook page and there's all kinds of different ideas. Another one that has nothing to do with math, but something I feel really passionate about also, is making grammar more fun. So if you didn't see this already, we have this poem, and this is, I did not write this, I'm not, I'm not claiming this poem. I didn't write it, I don't know who the author is, but it's a very famous poem, and it's the parts of speech poem. And so the kids recite this every morning, and we have all these motions that go with it, and I have a video of that in my store. And then, to go along with these parts of speech, we have these skits that I've written, where they get to be the different parts. So somebody is pronoun, and pronoun is like, so sneaky and mysterious, and they're like, pronoun, why are you being like that? And pronoun says, you know, like, well, I'm a pro, I keep in the noun Noun's identity a secret and throughout this skit he's just really secretive about who the noun is and then we have um, Verb who's like jumping around and he's like oh I love hopping I love thinking I love talking I love doing all these things and it's this super hyper um, really active character that's Verb and later you find out why Noun is kind of playing a game where he's a person place or thing and you have to guess what to remember that that's Noun and interjection just always interjecting in the middle of the skit it's just a silly skit and I have that for the parts of speech and I also have some for figurative language Language. So if you haven't checked that out as well, those are top sellers and it's a lot of fun. And I really love this poem. And you can find it just online if you just search parts of speech poem. This will just come up. It's very famous. And then we have our random robot parts. Our lost and found for robot parts. That's our life right now. We have robots everywhere. So I'm loving it. All right. Thank you guys for joining in. I better go. Could I have another conference here in a few minutes? Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, just leave them on here. Or you can send me a message. Oh, here we... How do you introduce at the beginning of the year? Okay, that's a good question. So I'll try to answer that real quick too. So on the very first very first moment when we start school to start that, I, I, they come to the carpet. So on that first day, because I don't want the kids like running around and there's all this furniture and they're walking through the door, I'm greeting them. It's the first day, we're excited. I have something for them to do right here or with the whiteboard so that we start at carpet. And then that first week, um, they actually do have assigned seating so that they can try out all the different things. So I have little name tags that I set up and the kids have a little name tag. And for that day, maybe this is their spot. So they get to see what it's like to work at the stool 
whole table. Then the next day, maybe their spot is right here. And it's not even for a whole day. A lot of times it's just for an activity. But I move around those name tags so that by the end of the first week, they've tried all the different spots. And then we really focus on, on how... Um, just focusing on how, where we learn best personally, like where I learn best and, and where I need to work when it's my turn, not necessarily just where my friends work. And then like, and when there's also rules, like we, if you're running or fighting over a spot, then you lose it. And I always have the right to move them if I feel like they're making a choice that's actually not best for their learning. And then, like I said, most of our day is in centers. So really we're just practicing the structure of those centers, cleaning up, practicing our classroom job and all those procedures. All right. Well, I better go because I have a parent here. So let me know if you have any other questions, and then I can always answer them later. Thanks for joining in, and have a wonderful afternoon.